back at you. Uh, this video, I'm going to move along kind of quick, and it's, uh, I want to tell you about some things coming up on my channel pretty soon. Uh, I want to show you one exercise here first. I hope you practiced the one I showed you before because this is a doozy. And uh, then I want to tell you about some things that I'm going to put on my channel, but uh, this video, as I said, I want to show you the exercise, and then I, I'm, I'm going to show you how to fix your frets. If you have dents in your frets, wear. Uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, show you how to level the frets and uh, basically get the dents out of them. Level them. Make sure the neck's straight. I'll, I've got to set the check that. Make sure the neck is straight. And I'm going to show you how to level the frets. And then I'm going to show you how to dress them and probably how to crown them. I don't know if I'll crown these or not, but, um, and how to polish them. So stick around for that if you want to learn how to do your own fret work, or, or how I do mine, and you, maybe you can get some tips from that that might help you. Um, a friend of mine in Japan, Peace Charles, and thank you for the great ideas, suggested that I show you um, some rock and roll guitar licks that I use in bluegrass, flat picking. You could use them in country or whatever you play, jazz, whatever. Uh, some rock and roll and heavy metal stuff that, you know, people, they give you a weird look sometimes when you whip that on them. Uh, he also suggested endings that, uh, like uh, to songs that you already know how to play if you just want to learn some new endings uh, there's a million of those that we could we could make a whole video just on that but those are some things coming up I've got uh, another Martin guitar here that uh, really needs it's needs help seriously that's a whole nother video too that'll be a complete repair on that guitar so you may want to tune in for that one. That's I'm not going to do that till after Christmas, but I'll get around to it and video it all and show you how it's a it's a good candidate for a neck reset. It's that bad. Um, I don't have time for that. I think I can save it another way, and uh, I'll show you how to do all of that. But uh, that's what's coming up on my channel. Uh, not this video, but ones to come. So. Subscribe, subscribe, I can't say it enough. Tell all your friends to subscribe. Anyone you know that uh, maybe wants to learn a few tips on fixing their own guitar, uh, hopefully can get something out of this. I'm not, I don't do that. It's not, you know, I'm not a, a luthier by any means. Maybe a guitar tech would be a better explanation. I don't know, but I just do my own guitar work because I know how I want it. You know, and I can set it up the way I want it, and I'll teach you how to do that. Anyway, I hope you practice the the thing I showed you last week because this exercise is uh, it's just that it's that very thing. If you can see this, I want you to start on the sixth string at the first fret and do that when you get there on the first string go up one fret and then start the sequence backwards when you get there on the sixth string go up a fret and just keep the pattern going. I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about. suggest you do this until your pinky reaches the 12th fret. Uh, you're going to feel it if you go that long. 
you're going to feel it in your arms and in your fingers. Um, uh, when you get, uh, you could do it when you, till you get to your pinky down to the seventh fret. Maybe easier on your hands. Uh, when you get to the seventh fret, just do the same sequence backwards. Work your way back up. idea and if you want to do that like I say all the way up to the your pinky reaches the 12th fret um, that's good because that's a real good exercise for your left hand you know working all the strings obviously it's good if you want to use the pick a lot on all the strings you know not just and some people get used to picking like in the middle you know in this uh, second third fourth strings should develop your technique to pick each string, you know, and be comfortable in that area when you're, you know, when you're practiced up. So that's the, uh, that's the exercise. That's the only exercise I'm going to give you today because we're going to get into this fret job. This guitar is, can you hear that? God. There's terrible dents in these frets, so I'm gonna get this. There's another buzz in this guitar too. It sounds like a brace loose, but that's not what it is. I already checked it out. I'll show you what it is. Uh, anyway, let me get the strings off of this and uh, let's get these frets redone and uh, I'll play you something and show you how much better it sounds. Hold on. Okay, I've got the strings loose. A lot of people do this a lot of different ways. Take these pins out. I'm um, going to show you a way that's simple and it's safe if you're easy with your hands. It's a simple pair of wire cutters. Rest across the saddle. I don't know how well you can see this with the light, but rest it across the saddle and just gently get that pin with those wire cutters and pull it up. There you go. Three, four, and I say gently because you can cut the whole top of the pin off if you're not careful. Drop it in the hole. Always, uh, I think it's important to always put the same pins back into the same holes. Um, you should do that because of the different sizes in the string gauges. Those balls wear, those balls on the end of the strings wear as they're pulled up to the pin inside the guitar. That's a, a neat little trick a guy showed me. It's, uh, the only thing you need is just wire cutters, you know, and like I say, just rest them gently on the bri on the saddle and very delicately get a hold of that pin and it'll just almost fall out for you. Um, the buzzing that I don't know if the camera picked it up. This guitar has had a, it's got another buzz besides the frets. And I thought it was a brace loose. And I got in there and got to looking around and found what it was. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but let's see if I can get some light on it for you. It has a Fishman Ellipse Matrix Blend system installed. I installed it in the guitar. What it is, is it has a, a bridge pickup 
and it has a, I don't know if you can see the condenser mic, yeah there's a condenser mic, microphone inside the guitar. Then you have, where am I at? You have a, a, a volume, right here's a volume, up and down, and you also have a blend between the bridge, uh, the saddle pickup and the, the microphone, which I love, because you can, you can, you know, slide that back and forth and get the blend that you want between the pickup and the mic, or you can use only the pickup or only the mic, whichever you prefer. It has a phase button in the middle. These are, these are fairly expensive. They're really superb, though. They, oh man, they sound true. Fishman Ellipse Matrix Blend. They, there are several different models of these, too. But, uh, you know, it's got the, got the plug in the end of it to hook it up to an amp or a sound system or whatever. So, anyway, that, that little button right here, that little button right there, that changes the phase of those two, the saddle pickup and the microphone changes the phasing between the two and it changes the sound quite a bit too but that switch is what's, what was rattling it was making a hell of a noise it sounded like a loose brace exactly the way a loose brace sounds almost like there was some distortion on the guitar I hope the camera got that before and I'll show you what it sounds like after I figure out how to fix that because I'm going to fix it while while we're in here I wanted to show you, there you can see the, the mic, and it's going to get, a set of these, 13 to 56 Martin Acoustic SP, I love those strings, they don't last long the way I play, but they're cheap, and they sound good while they're alive. Okay, let me gather my thoughts, and it's a small gathering, but hold on. Well, the first thing you want to do when you are going to dress your frets, level them, dress them, round them, and polish them. The first thing you want to do is make sure that neck is as straight as you can get it. So I'm just sliding down the neck now, and it's got a backward bow. There's no relief in that neck, which there wouldn't be with no strings. But I'm going to have to back the truss rod back off just slightly. That's about a quarter of a turn. I want to make sure that that neck is as straight I'm even going to put a straight edge on it just to, to be certain that it's straight because that's still not you can go a little more you want the neck as straight and flat as you can have it when you flatten your frets when you start this so that was about a quarter of a turn that was an awful lot Truss rods are beginning to feel really loose. Ah, yes. We have straightness. I'm going to get a... Get a... Straight edge and make 100% sure, but before I do, this is uh, obviously a... Stuart McDonald fret file which I'm not going to use uh, well I might use it I don't know but all it is is a, a mill file with a piece of wood glued to it a mill file with a piece of wood glued to it and they're like uh, they're almost 40 bucks I think 30 
five, forty. Depends on the, the size you get. I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use a diamond file. I don't know if you've seen these probably. There's all kind of ways to do this, all kind of tools you can get. Uh, this is like a diamond block file. It really, you can really cut the frets away quickly with this. This is, uh, they make like a coarse and medium and fine, super fine and ultra fine. Um, you got to really be gentle with this. But I'm going to start with this because I should knock the nut out of it and run this all the way up gently, very gently and evenly because there's an arch in this fingerboard. In fact, I should measure that. All the way up and down the frets, very slowly and very smoothly. But before I start, I'm going to take a blue magic marker and I'm going to mark across each fret. Okay? Each fret's going to be blue. Hold on. Are we rolling? All right, so I'm going to I'm going to take a blue magic marker. It's going to mark across every fret across the top of it. Not every one because I'm not worried about these frets down here. I'm going to hit them a little bit, but the biggest dents are first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, and barely in the sixth. So those are the, the main concern. Rightfully, you should tape each fret off with masking tape. You know, you don't want this, this blue shit all over your guitar. But, I've done this several times. I feel pretty confident that uh, I won't write too badly on the fretboard. We're going to clean all that up anyway, so it doesn't matter if a little ink does get on it. I want to come down to, say, the 10th fret, I believe. And I'm going to mark all these frets very carefully with blue. And you're probably wondering why. Maybe uh, some of you probably know why. What this does, when I run that file over the frets. I can see what's been taken off and what's been left. Where the dents are will really be visible with this blue coloring. And you, you know how far to go too. I mean when the when the blue where the dents in the fret are, when that blue disappears, you are very close to where you want to be. So, and you want to really be careful there at that point. I don't know if you can see this or not. Lighting's kind of bad here, but there you can see the blue frets. I marked it down to and including the tenth one. Now I'm going to run that file over these and like I say just watch for what blue disappears and when only the dents are showing blue I, I know I'm really close to start being more careful. <laughs> okay let me uh, get some tools together here. Well, I went ahead and masked off the sound hole because you don't want that that shavings going down in your guitar. And that Fishman system I installed in there has magnets that hold it in place. The mounting bracket has two magnets in it, so you know, magnets and metal, every bit of this dust, I don't know if you can even see that or not, but every bit of that dust would go, it would be sucked down in there by those magnets. So I taped off the hole and made several passes and just about where I want to be. 
the only blue that I see now on the frets that were damaged the only blue I see is where the dip in the fret was where it was worn worn out I don't know how much of this you're getting on, on video but I'll show it to you in a second those are the main frets that I'm worried about I'm not even gonna I might run the file down over these just gently just to make sure they all are level with with these and like I said it doesn't take very much with, with uh, these these diamond block files you can uh, overkill real easy with those. take off too much or ruin the whole entire fret I don't want to take a lot more off up here. I don't want to take a lot more off up here because I haven't decided if I want to crown them or not yet. If I crown them, that will be just enough to take out what little bit of blue I see left in those dents that were in there. Oh, this guitar is going to sound sweet. No more buzzing. Not for the guitar, anyway. We'll take, uh, determine the arch of, of the fretboard in the saddle. The saddle, I think, is arched to to match the arch of the fretboard. It's not got it's not a very much of an arch, but but it's got one. And then we use a sanding block made to that arch, whatever uh, whatever this arch is. I'll find out in a minute. I'll have to gauge it. And then we'll take a sanding block of that same number sand the entire board just like I'm doing right now with this file only it will put the arch back in the frets once I determine what what the arch is a lot of guitar players I know um, acoustic players most electric players prefer the arch a lot of the acoustic players and the type of music that I do really doesn't care if you put it back in there or not. People are different, you know. That's pretty good. That's about all I want to take off with this. Maybe these lower ones a couple times. I took more off up here than I'm taking off down here. It doesn't really need it down here toward the body, but I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep them level. That's the that's the key right at the moment. I hope YouTube extended that uh, 10 minute thing. They they used to have a limit on your videos. You could only post the video with 10 minutes. and I think they may have changed that by now. I, I don't know. Maybe one of you all can post a comment and enlighten me on that. I haven't been on YouTube very much for the past few years. This is a fine, uh, ultra fine rather block so yeah I, of course when I would have already been down to the fretboard by now but that's as much as I'm going to go with this block because I haven't decided yet I don't know if I want to crown them or not Still need to 
side on that. Crowns are nice, but let me give you my opinion on crowning your frets after you dress them. When you crown a fret, it makes a nice round uh, top across it. Instead of it, they're flat right now, they're completely flat. And when you crown them, they it puts like a, a top, like a contour on top. And you actually, after you do that, when you know the string, you have less fret touching the string, if that makes any sense. And the laws of physics tell you that it's going to wear faster because it's littler less of it. Whereas if you leave those frets flat and you press the string down again them, there's more fret for the string to hit and in turn they don't wear as fast again. Um, I don't know. There's so many ways you can it's so many different ways and people's different opinions and the way they like their guitar set up. I'm not big on crowning frets. I think they note out truer if they're flat. But everybody's got their opinion, I guess. Okay, I'm going to take a break and think about this and decide if I want to crown those frets or not. If not, the next step will be checking the arch, getting the right block and putting that arch back on there. And then we'll be getting close to polishing. I need to clean that fretboard too. It's got DNA all over it. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of a crown back on the frets. They are really flat. So I have decided to put a little bit of a crown back on them. I don't want I don't want them crowned the way they were that much. I don't like that much of a crown. But I'll put some back on it. should be very careful doing this. You don't want that crown file to ever touch the fretboard. Get the right one, the right size, usually a medium or small. Works on just about everything. Almost everything. This is going to take a long time. Okay, so I did end up uh, crowning them a little bit. Um, I forgot to turn the damn camera on. I got the arch on this board is a 15. I already measured it and I took a, a number 15 sanding block first before I crowned them and ran that sanding block down up and down the frets. That put the arch, the original arch, back in there. I really don't care for that. I would just as soon play flat frets with no crown. They last longer. But then I went ahead and put a little bit of a crown on them. Not very much. They're still flat on the very tip of the crown. But... Let me get rid of some of this stuff here. Anyway, that arch is a 15, and I sanded it with 800 grit sandpaper, 
so they're fairly smooth already but we're gonna polish them down get them a lot smoother than that like I can say there's just a tiny bit of a crown there the crown itself is still flat on top so it's not really crowned like like a uh, like it was like it was from the factory because they, I'm telling you they just wear out faster because there's less fret touching the string you know um, it's going to wear out fast it's, it's going to last longer if there's more fret touching the string and, and in my opinion um, when you crown frets unless you really like them being crowned you're just taking off more metal that you know that could wear and last many more years metal that you don't really need to take off okay I'm going to get some sandpaper now and um, I'm probably going to have to get some some more masking tape you don't want that sandpaper touching that fretboard I'm going to mask off each fret one at a time down to about the tenth because I didn't do very much down here at all I may hit those lick we'll see anyways I'm gonna mask the first I'm just gonna do one at a time mask the first fret off sand it and start with about a 600 500 grit and work my way up to uh, I think a thousand is all I have here right now but that'll do it I'm not, it's not gonna it's not gonna hurt my fingers any any more than if I had 1500 grit and they are gonna shine like the moon then we'll put strings on well but no then we will clean all this DNA off of it clean the fretboard up put some oil on it and those things should shine nicely be right back I'm not going to bore you to death with all this sanding but I'll just give you an idea of what's happening here you want that fret to shine like a brand new fret a brand new guitar shouldn't be any dents shouldn't be a mark on it anywhere my masking tape doesn't stick so well that fretboard it needs clean bad it really needs clean and it will get clean we'll do that I'll show you how to make it so slick it's just uh, so comfortable to play that way all right I gotta go back to this I like to do this through magnification because my eyes are bad, 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 bad. So this really helps a lot. Like I say, I'm not going to bore you to death with me doing this. It's going to take a long time to do each fret, but I wanted to give you an idea. I want to show you how I do it. And you can decide, you know, you can do your own. make your own technique up so to speak oh yes I like what I see it's looking good I gotta fix that button in that Fishman system. That that little button vibrates. This guitar's got tremendous bass and volume. It's probably the most powerful guitar I've ever owned, acoustic. But that little volume on that, uh, or little button on that 
system in there is, man, it's really making a lot of racket. So I got to uh, do this fret with 800 grit and then 1,000 grit. I'll show you what it looks like. I'll show you what they all look like when I get done.